Hey team, welcome to video number one of leading small groups for teenagers. I'm going to be giving you some training over the next 10, 11 ish videos of how to lead small groups for teenagers, which is like the title says. Anyway, welcome to my lounge room. I'm sorry it's a bit drab. Uh, we can we can add something. Are you ready? Let's add something. Well, look at that movie magic, people. It just appeared there. Anyway, let's get started for this first video. We're going to look at why would you even run small groups for teenagers? I'm going to give you three reasons and they are one through small groups. Young people can encounter God in his word Two, in youth small groups. You build genuine community and three in youth small groups. You teach young people to encounter God through his word. Number one, encountering God through his word. If you have a youth small group, there are lots of great stuff that you do. You hang out together, you might play a game, you'll hopefully eat food together, you'll pray for each other, you'll talk about the week that's been, you'll go on tangents, you will definitely go on tangents. Some of them will be good ones where you talk about predestination and a lot of them will be bad ones where you talk about memes and YouTube and who's dating who, depending on what age your group is. But the one thing that you will always do in your small group, if it's gone well, is you will spend time studying God's word. And the reason why you do that is not because it's really important that teenagers are able to name every book of the Bible, all 66, from Genesis all the way through to Hebrews. It's not important that they know all these things. They don't need to know, you know, how long each king reigned. If they know those things, that's great. But the point of small group, when you study the Bible, isn't really to get them a world-class Bible knowledge so that they can win at Bible trivia, but because we believe as Christians that God speaks to us through his word. That while God speaks in all sorts of different ways, he can speak through you know, other people, he can speak to you personally through his spirit. Uh, the Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. God speaks in many different ways, but the main way that he has chosen to reveal himself to us is through his word. Everything else that God says in this world and is saying a lot, none of it goes beyond God's word. But in God's word, we see everything that God needs for us to know about who he is and what he has done so that we might be able to find life in him and live a life for him. And so it's vitally important in small group that you spend time looking at the Bible. And as you do that, young people will encounter God. That means that as you look at the Bible in small group, you're not just doing comprehension so you can make sure that they understand the passage, but you're learning what does the passage say and what was it saying to the people when they first wrote it and what is it saying to us now so that we can put it into practice in our lives and we can live for Jesus out there. It's not about just knowing stuff here, but it's about being changed here so we can live differently with these and everything. You get what I'm saying. Number two, creating genuine community. The great thing about youth small groups is that you have this group of young people who will get together every week. And as you spend time together, eating together, laughing together, going on those tangents together, studying God's word together, talking about how you've been challenged and how you want to put things into practice, coming back the next week and asking each other, how did you go with those things that God was saying to you? Praying for each other, sharing the ways that God has answered prayer, all those things, as you do them, they build community. All those things knit your group together so that together you are learning how to better follow Jesus. We aren't called to be people who follow Jesus on our own. We are called to be people who follow Jesus together. And in youth small groups, you have a bunch of young people who are in a similar situation, who are going through similar things, looking at the same parts of the Bible, and together they are discovering how they put it into practice in their lives. Now what that looks like for a bunch of boys who are in year 7 is going to be quite different for a bunch of girls who are in year 12. But both groups are building a genuine community and both groups are together learning how to follow Jesus. And I promise you, if you guard your group, 
you guard that time together and you diligently work at building that community, and we're going to talk about that later, if you diligently work at that, you will see the fruit happen. You will see relationships grow and you will see God at work in these young people as they live out their faith in the group and beyond the group. Number three, learning how to encounter God through his word. Now, the time that you spend in small group studying the Bible is not just about the time that you spend in small group studying the Bible. Of course, it is about that time and it's about the way that you put into practice in the next week or month or even year to come. But what you do as you study the Bible is you teach young people how to read the Bible for themselves. Say we do a study in Ecclesiastes and we spend a few weeks looking at the book. Well, that is going to bring fruit immediately as we see what God has to say through Ecclesiastes and as we put it into practice in our lives. But also it's going to bring fruit in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100,000 million years. I don't know how long people are going to live for in the future, but the point is that as you learn how to study Ecclesiastes when you're like 13 years old, that you can remember that so that when you approach Ecclesiastes again when you're 19, you can remember some of the things that you've learned when you were 13. And when you approach it again when you're 26 and maybe you get to it again when you're 72 or however many times you come back to it, the foundations that you get when you're in this small group learning how to study the Bible teaches you how to read the Bible for the rest of your life. Now, hopefully, when a young person leaves small group, they will continue to study the Bible with other people at church and in small groups. But even if they don't, wouldn't it be great if when they left, they knew how to read the Bible for themselves and they knew how then to read the Bible with others and they can take the knowledge that they've gained in small group into the next thing that they do when they become a youth leader or when they become a small group leader for their uni group or whatever it is that they're doing, when they read the Bible with a friend, whoever it is, whatever they do, that what they learn in how to encounter God through his word in small group will be infinitely useful as they live their life beyond youth group. So there are our three reasons for why we have small groups for teenagers. Of course, there are many more reasons, but they are our three. One, we want young people to encounter God through his word so that they might know him and what he has done, to see his love for them in his son Jesus, so that they might live for him. And if they don't know him, put their faith in him and then go on and live for him because God loves to share himself with us through his word. Two, because we are building genuine community. And three, because as we teach people to encounter God through his word, they will be able to take that into the rest of their lives and put it into practice until Jesus comes back or they go to be with him. Well, thanks for watching video number one. The next video is going to be on the qualities of an excellent small group leader. Hopefully you like it. I primarily have made these videos for the leaders of my youth group, the Inner North Youth Group of Melbourne. But if you are out there in YouTube land and you find them useful, that's fantastic. If you want to know more about me and my ministry, look at my blog, read my books, all that kind of stuff. You can find out more about me at tomfrench.com.au. The link is down the bottom in the description. Otherwise, uh, I hope this has been useful for you.